Okay, I've got a verbal announcement on, on Zoom. All right, so I'm gonna start sharing my screen now. And for the sake of the streamlined delivery, we're just gonna use my shared screen and a few of our guests, we've got some great guests today, are gonna speak briefly and I've got their materials in the same deck. So hopefully this is gonna be fairly um, technologically simple. All right. So everyone can see my screen. Yes. You can? Brilliant. All right. Well, first of all, thank you so much for coming along on a Thursday evening and, and joining this session. I know you've got lots of other things that you probably would rather or should be doing um, Netflix or preparing for examinations or preparing assessments, uh, assignments. So thanks for coming along. Uh, the aim of today then is to share some information about this film festival that we were putting together and that we're launching very soon. And also to try and gain the participation of more people from the get go so that we can use your input and we can collaborate and make this as useful and as enjoyable as possible. So I'll provide an outline of today's session. I'll give a little bit of housekeeping briefly. And then I'll explain what is the My Mind on Film Festival and why are we doing it. And then we're going to talk about young people and mental health a little bit. So we've got some guests who are going to give different perspectives on young people and mental health. I'm glad to see that we have some young people in the, the group today. Um, this being a Malaysian youth mental health festival, it's good that we have some participation already. I'm neither Malaysian nor young, so uh, I'm going to try and get through my, my introduction fairly, fairly swiftly. Um, and then we're going to talk a little bit about how to make a film, if you want to make a film. So we've got Edward Lim, who's a film producer, and he's going to give us some tips. And then we're going to explain how you can get involved in this festival in different ways. And then finally, we'll get to the interesting bit, we hope, the question and answer session where um, you guys get to pose your questions to us um, and we can try and uh, respond to those and also take on board some suggestions that you might have. And then we'll have a brief uh, summary with some key points and some key dates that you want to keep in mind in your diaries. So the housekeeping, we're gonna try and get done by 9.15, a very swift session. Um, to do that, could you, if you have questions, please save your questions till the end. You can put questions in the chat session, the chat section at any time, uh, we can arrange those. But if you've got verbal questions, unless you have some burning desire to jump in, um, please keep your mic closed uh, unless you're speaking. But if you do, if you feel as though there's something that um, you really need to express, then you can raise your hand and you can join in. So it's not an absolute rule, but just for the sake of trying to uh, help the speakers to concentrate when they are speaking. If I'm speaking too quickly, by the way, because I am uh, conscious of time and I do have a tendency to speak quickly, just uh, let me know. So then, brilliant. What is the My Mind on Film? festival and why are we doing it perhaps more importantly. So we started the Centre for Mental Health and Wellbeing um, just under a year ago. We started talking about it, um, myself and some, uh, some, um, some colleagues at the Department of Psychology and Health University and the Malaysian Mental Health Association, uh, Dr. Andrew Maharaj, uh, the president. And when we began this, we were wanting from the outset to engage young people and to try and involve young people in whatever we're doing. So it involves uh, research or public health and um, outreach. And what we didn't want to do is to prescribe from the get go what we think young people ought to be thinking about and how they ought to see their own mental health and what we can do to help them with it. You know, there's no doubt that we have some expertise and we can lend that and we are a bit old and we can, we can share our experiences and that's going to be valuable. But, uh, you know, things are changing very quickly. And what we've lived through, um, even those of us who are, you know, just going into middle age and those who are at the back end of it and those who are a bit older, it's much, much different. Um, so the film festival is really designed to provide a platform so that we can really uh, allow young people to express their ideas and share their perspectives. So the objectives are then to inspire that, to provide a medium through which people will feel comfortable um, and they'll feel sort of motivated to, to do that. Secondly, we want to recognize the universality of mental health. Uh, it's, it's a peculiarity of mental health compared to other forms of health that there's a tendency to try and distance ourselves from it. 
perhaps because we associate it too closely with mental ill health. Um, but you know, mental health is is universal. We all have it, um, and it's across the full spectrum from mental health that's challenged and maybe uh, is problematic and is something that people might be struggling with, all the way through to really positive mental health. And there are times in our lives when all of us, more or less all of us at different times, um, we experience really great mental health um, and we work together and things are going well and we're able to, um, to, to navigate our lives you know, and our relationships and be more contented, happier, more balanced emotionally. Um, there are other times when we sustain injuries and things happen to us and of course um, our biology is out of balance etc all kinds of things uh, overlap and we, we experience hardship and collectively in our families um, in our communities this is something that we have to deal with all the time but this festival we want to emphasize that mental health is universal it's something we all experience but it's changeable it shifts over time things can get better um, we can do things to improve it together and um, for ourselves uh, and it's something that is, is, can be highly malleable. So we emphasize the positive. And then finally, um, we want to break down stigma around mental health. So while we say mental health is, is universal and we want to sort of dissociate the concept from just mental ill health, um, of course, there's the stigma around, around mental ill health, particularly mental illness. And this makes it much more difficult for people to deal with their own um, concerns, if they have concerns for their mental health um, and to seek treatment and even to approach other people and to, to make positive changes. I think one thing that's important to acknowledge, and this is from very much from a personal perspective, um, there's a good reason why that stigma exists. And I, I think we have to sort of have this conversation very carefully and understand that um, breaking down the stigma maybe lacks an understanding that the stigma is there for a reason. You know, mental health is perplexing and mental illness is you know can be really scary and terrifying so understandably when these things happen to us we do want to distance ourselves so um maybe we want to approach this this issue of stigma very carefully it's something that we can you know, start conversations around okay so the submissions to our festival we're inviting young people to, to make films um, from a few minutes long up to eight minutes long just short films we're going to provide some guidelines on how they might do that, but really we don't want to be too prescriptive again in, in how they want to express themselves or how you want to express yourself if you're thinking about taking part in this festival. Um, there are two age ranges, high schoolers. So this is basically those who are 16 plus, but um, are still in school. And for those young people, we'll be engaging them through teachers, through counsellors and through other gatekeepers. So they're in sort of a, a protected environment. And then for young adults who are 18 and above, um, up to 25, then a different category and they'll be able to engage with us more independently um, and pursue the filmmaking more independently. All right, this is the section that some people are particularly interested in, the prizes. Uh, the festival is to, to gather as much um, as we can from as many people. We want to try and get as many films and share them um, as is possible. But we're also including a competition. And There'll be several rounds through which we select uh, what we judge to be the better films, all the way through to a round of finalists where there'll be six films, three from each category. And the finalists um, will be judged by a jury, including peer jurors, so young people, um, those who are engaged in mental health and perhaps engaged in filmmaking as well. But also we're honored to have a range of um, uh, very, um, uh, highly regarded people across mental health advocacy as well as mental health treatment uh, and filmmaking. So we have the Tunku Pateri, who is the international patron of World Mental Health Day this year, uh, which is fantastic, drawing attention to the commitment to mental health uh, for Malaysia particularly. Uh, Dr. Dr. Andrew Mohanraj, who I mentioned, who's the president of MMHA, but also a board member of the World Federation for Mental Health. And Edward Lim, who's a film producer with Grim Film, who's going to be speaking with us a little bit today. And Ming Han, who is also known as the Ming Thing. The Ming Thing, um, who I only recently learned about, which shows how cool he is and how uncool I am. Um, but he's a, a very highly regarded YouTuber. Um, for prizes, we have, we have a range of things on offer. Um, and the, the stockpile is growing gradually, particularly the more tangible items. We aren't able to to confirm just yet, but we're hoping to have some fairly um, alluring kit for young filmmakers by next week. But 
those who um, do reach the finals, their, their films will be screened in MBO Cinema Tropicana, provided uh, the conditions allow for it. But if not, we'll have a virtual screening and then we'll have a real life screening, face-to-face uh, -face screening when um, conditions permit. There will be some cash prizes, scholarships and bursaries to help universities, undergraduate and graduate programs, film industry placements. And we're also offering packages of counseling and therapy through our um, excellent services at Health University and at the Malaysian Mental Health Association. Okay, so um, I'd now like to hand over to Amanda Kwa, who is a school counselor at Stella Maris International School. And Amanda's gonna to talk to us a little bit about a school counselor's perspective on mental health within a contemporary high school setting. Okay, Amanda, would you mind taking over? I think you might still mute it, Amanda. We can hear you, but your voice is very soft. Would you mind increasing the volume a bit? Yeah, or it's getting better. Yeah. Okay, I'll just keep the mic. Amanda, I, I can't hear it. I don't know if everyone else can. It sounds still. Hello. Yeah, Amanda, I can't. I can't hear anything. Can you hear, Bashir? Yeah? I can hear very soft. Um, I can hear, but it's very soft. Yeah. Hello. Okay, just give me a moment. Maybe I got to switch my mic. Yeah. Yes, no I think that would be. Yeah. I'll tell you what, let's, um, while we're doing a mic change, let's go to our next guest speaker, and then we'll come back to Amanda so she gets a bit of take the pressure off. Um, so, Nani, are you there? I told you this would be technologically seamless. <laughs> Hello. Hi, hey, Nani, how are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. Brilliant. So let me introduce Navini Jayakuma. And ja uh, Nani is a psychology student at Health University, and she's part of our team putting together the film festival. And she's going to give right. the undergraduate perspective. OK, Nani, take it away. All right. So um, my first point um, was some of us have never been away from home. So um, in terms of isolation, you know, being university students, um, we're all, you know, some of us might be traveling from home or some of us might have actually, you know, left our home country. You know, we have, some of us are from abroad. Um, and now, right now, um, in the time of the pandemic, it can be really hard. Um, I think I've spoken to a lot of my friends um, from um, abroad, you know, I have friends from Nepal and things like that. And uh, for them, it's been really hard, you know, even though they were okay at the start, you know, they've always had people around them and things like that. Um, in terms of their mental health, there has been a decline. And, um, you know, seeing that happen, um, you know, obviously, it's, it's very hard. So that that's one thing to think about, you know, as um, a student, the life of a student. Um, the second thing is, um, you know, as university students, it's a daily struggle to balance, you know, having an education, a social life, um, finances, you know, in general, our well-being. So in terms of that, you know, we're all always on our gadgets and our phones. Um, and then, you know, trying to balance, you know, having all these assignments, everything is being done online right now. And uh, just having that transition um, that that was also, um, I think, a detrimental factor um, to our mental health. I think you know, even uh, for me myself, it was a really difficult transition. You know, from going to uni every day and then you know, uh, meeting my friends. You know, so I had my social life there, and then at the same time, you know, I was going, I was um, to classes and things like that. And all of a sudden, you have that switch and you have that change, and uh, that can be really difficult. Um, so it's not always easy to kind of balance your um, physical well-being and mental well-being at the same time when you've got so many other factors to think about. And then um, the struggle doesn't end there. So it's not just your entire university life. You've got uh, to think about, okay, will I be able to get a job after I graduate? Um, you know, with the retrenchment rates um, increasing and the employment rates decreasing, um, you know, there's that fear, you know, so anxiety levels um, start increasing, you know, you've, you've got all these 
I'm worrying and panicking and there's uh, so much to think about. So it's not just, uh, oh no, I've got to do really well and I've got to graduate. You've also got this, this thought where, am I going to get a job after this? What's next? You know? So I think, you know, these are just some of the factors and things that play into the struggles uh, of a student's uh, mental health. Yeah. Thanks, Nani. No, that's, that's a really great overview of, of what you guys are going through. And I think a lot of people probably can identify with that. Um, and we, I think we see it, um, you know, as, as faculty within the university. We, we totally understand and uh, you know, appreciate that it must be very, very difficult. Okay, all right, Nani. So we'll go to the next person. Amanda, are you uh, want to try your mic again? Hi, can you hear me now? It's, it's marginally louder, Amanda. I can just hear you. That's so faint. Is it, um, I wonder if you want to try without, uh, without your microphone at all. I don't know if it allows for it in your, where you are. Is this better? That's better. That's perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Take it away. Uh, Amanda. Yeah. The, the slide mark. <laughs> Sorry. Ah, yeah. Good point. Okay. So Amanda's going to talk to us about the high school setting after we spoke about the university. Yeah. Okay. Um, so. First of all, I thought I'll talk about some factors um, that I feel lead to deteriorating mental health in um, high schoolers. I think when um, you're at that age where you're starting to prioritize um, your peers more than your family, um, what I see with a lot of high schoolers is that oftentimes the main cause of um, deteriorating mental health um, are from their peers, uh, from their classmates or from their friends. Um, at that age, there's a huge um, need for um, wanting to belong, finding that sense of belonging amongst their peers um, and trying to fit in. So when they're unable to do so, and um, especially if they're victims of bullying or if they're being outcasted um, by their peers, that can have a huge impact on their mental health. The next factor is uh, also family and uh, their parents at home. Um, I think these days it's very common um, to find students that come from uh, either broken families or um, families that don't have a very good relationship amongst the family members. And I think that also has an impact on them. Um, every day they hear their parents uh, arguing or those kind of things. And they worry and they feel helpless that they're unable to do anything. And I think the third one um, is also related to family, especially parents, uh, that there's a lot of expectations um, from the parents uh, to the students, and they feel like they need to live up to their expectations. Um, a lot of it is academic. Um, I think here in Malaysia, a lot of um, academic expectations to do well, what they're gonna do next in future. And I think that creates a lot of stress and a lot of anxiety in um, the high schoolers. So what prevents them from reaching out for, for help? I think the first one is very common, not just in high schoolers, but with everyone um, in general is the stigma. There is, um, this sense of like when I see the counselor, something is wrong with me. So a lot of them, um, students in my school, don't want to be seen with me or don't want to be seen um, walking into my office because if other people notice that they're coming to see the counselor, they're worried that their friends will think something is wrong with them. And I think um, for a lot of the high schoolers, they are starting to be at the age where they're a bit more aware um, of the impact that, that this might have on their families as well. So they're worried about... Um, their parents, they don't want to worry their parents, they don't want their parents to um, have to worry about them and what they're going through um, with their own mental health. So that's why there is um, this reluctance to reach out for help, um, to go for counselling or even to just talk to their parents about what they're going through. Um, and one thing that I wanted to touch on is also the impact of um, the whole COVID-19 pandemic as well as the MCO on the high schoolers. So because of the lockdown and the restrictions, um, a huge... Um, part of this year has been um, online learning for them. And with online learning, um, it's there's a lot of disruptions, a lot of distractions. And I think for them, it's a lot harder to follow um, what their teacher is teaching. And because of that, then um, what they learn as well um, might not be as much as what they expect. And, they, and that causes a lot of stress, a lot of anxiety, because again, there's a lot of expectation to still perform um, regardless of whether they're learning in person in school or if they're learning online at home. And with online um, studying, online learning, there's also, I believe, an increase um, in cases of cyberbullying 
because the the students are in front of the computer so often that um it becomes very easy to just even when lessons are going on to just have uh, chats at the side and a lot of cyberbullying goes on um behind the teachers back to the students themselves and i think also being um stuck at home 24/7 um is very difficult for um the students that they don't get to see their friends there's no um peer interaction face to face um and also having to sometimes live at home for for such a i mean for 24/7 especially if things at home are um tough given um the whole pandemic so some parents um have lost their jobs there's a lot of um financial constraints a lot of um, arguments between parents because of all this increased um tension and i think that also places a added um, kind of factor of stress on the students um so yeah that's just the three points that i thought i'll touch on um regarding mental health in um high school students excellent amanda thank you i it was i really appreciate the fact as well that you showed the background and talking about the parents and the family situation so it, it really highlights how systemic the pressures that we're experiencing now are particularly so you end up getting you know pressures going in both directions um yep. amplifying okay brilliant thank you Okay, so we'll no move on to um, Jeremy Tan. Jeremy, you there? Yep, I'm here. Hey, Hello. Jeremy. Hey, guys. Hey, hey, Mark. So let um, me introduce Jeremy, who's in some splendid <laughs> place, uh, Avery or something there. Jeremy is the <laughs> project lead on Project Heads Up, which is a mental health initiative um, that is initiated by Global Shapers Kuala Lumpur, which is a youth branch of the World Economic Forum, as I understand. Yep, that's yeah. right. Okay, so... the young professional's perspective. <laughs> cool. I'm just going to set myself to about four minutes or five. Just tell me if you think that the time is not enough. Um, first and foremost, Mark, um, thank you for inviting me for this um, initiative. I love it. I think we dis when we first discussed it, I was really excited. So um, just to build on a little bit more from uh, both Nani as well as Amanda from where they were, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the young professionals. I'm not sure the crowd, um, how many of you guys are working. But um, if none of you guys are working, then this is probably something for Mark, I guess. So, um, so I think back in, back in March, when we all first started off this MCO, I think most of the working adults will be really excited, right? We do not have to go through the Malaysian infamous jam. And we, we feel that we get to sleep more. But um, six weeks in, um, you can see that people are starting to feel uh, giddy, anxious, and they actually wanted to go back to the office simply because for three different reasons. Um, okay, so I think actually, um, yeah, so I actually changed a little bit on the slides, but it's okay. So the first one is what we call as the water cooler chat. So uh, what I actually put was, um, help me, I'm dehydrated. So um, not sure anybody here knows what's the water cooler chat, but basically in the Malaysia, in, in the very simple terms, it's called gossip in a very bad way. But in a very good way, it's, it's a place, it's a common place where, you know, if you're working in the uh, if you're working in a workspace, it's where you go get your you know get your water from your water cooler, and around there you will spend about five ten minutes there, chit chatting with with whoever that comes next there, uh, whoever that comes to the pantry itself, uh, if you like them of course. So um, that's actually where you start socializing with your colleagues, and you see them beyond your colleagues. So you don't see them as you know, someone who I need to pass my work to so that they can it can be approved or it can be cited. But this is where you talk about um, your, their families, their hobbies, their interests. And uh, why this was really important was because it builds a sense of community and also it builds a sense of trust amongst people. Um, yeah, so I think it's sort of something like, um, sort of something like uh, high school kids when you just go to, you know, canteen. So our, the canteen for, you, canteen for you guys would be like the water cooler for us. So um, the next would be work-life balance, unbalance. So um, like I said earlier, right, uh, when the MCO lockdown, everyone, uh, when the MCO lockdown happened, everyone thought that, hey, you know, so nice right now. I have, for me personally, for example, I travel from Klang to KL. So I take about four hours a day in daily commute. So for me, the first idea as, a, as an accounting student would be, I save four hours a day. I can do so much more. But um, the fact is, unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. That's simply because um, you just build everything into one cluster. So like right, right now where I'm sitting with my table is basically where I was working since eight in the morning all the way to now. Even lunch, I just take my food and I just sit in front of a laptop, you know, just in case someone wants to text me or want to do, uh, want to do some conversation over Zoom, which, which is the next trouble we talk about. Uh, so it's so hard to balance the work-life balance anymore. 
That's why it's a bit becoming more and more unbalanced. I think in US alone, people are clogging, clogging in three more hours more. And I have no doubt that Malaysians clog in more. And lastly is, uh, am I over zooming? So um, I'm not sure about you guys, but in a working space or working community, especially on LinkedIn, you see that early on in uh, the pan pandemic, people would just take a lot of pictures, a lot of group photos like this and post it up, write a real long story about how we are moving into digitalization, how we, you know, how we are looking into things and we are so excited about it. But after a while, you can see that nobody starts posting anymore because everybody feels uh, the anxiety as well as exhaustion to it. So what does, um, I'm not sure, I, I think you guys know um, video chat, I guess, but for in terms of workspace, so about 40% of people actually gets into more, uh, more meetings, not because they want to contribute, but simply because they were either roped in by the boss or they wanted to show that they are working. So this is a culture where, um, you know, because you do not have the water cooler chat, so the trust between colleagues gets lost. And then that's where now you jump into more Zoom meetings or you're pulled into more Zoom meetings just to showcase that you are working. And when you're in a Zoom meeting like this, for example, right, you get the, you get the anxiety that you're constantly being watched. So imagine, imagine like half of my days are just filled with Zoom meeting. It's as though that I'm constantly being watched by somebody else. So I guess I'll just simply put it there and we can have more discussions later on. Thanks, Mark. Fantastic, Jeremy. Great to get that perspective. It sounds exhausting. Um, we talked about burnout a few months ago and I'm sure that that's mounting. Um, okay, brilliant. Let's move on to the next perspective before we go to Q&A. So Tamar, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Hey, Tamar. So Tamar is a clinical psychologist with MHA and she's gonna give us the perspective um, from uh, the delivery of services and mental health among young service users. Okay, okay thanks, Mark. Okay, let me start by saying this. Being a young person is definitely not easy. So hats off to all the young people out there. Um, so in particular, it is because a young person goes through many transitions and stresses in life that we aren't even aware about. So for example, um, this period, we go through our major exams and also we even, you know, face big decisions in life, such as choosing a career, uh, managing finance, and for some people, even deciding who to marry, and then um, navigating family life. So all these can be actually quite confusing for a young person, because since young, um, we are brought up on two goals. And the first one is to excel in our studies or whatever curricular activities. And the second one is basically to obey the rules that our parents and our teachers set for us. So as we grow older, though, we realize we are transiting into a phase that we are suddenly free to craft our own life. So suddenly, people start to realize that establishing their own identity becomes very important. Who they are, what they stand for, what they want for their future, it becomes so relevant and necessary. And now life is filled with new responsibilities, new rules of behavior, and balancing friendships and romantic relationships. And young people are expected to do it well, even without a guidebook. So taken together, all this can be very, very overwhelming. And it is normal for people to come into the therapy and say, I don't know what to do, I'm at loss. So as our stress level increase, we notice that there's a disruption in a daily functioning. For example, people come and say that they struggle to concentrate in school or at work, they can't sleep, they can't eat, or they have developed unhealthy habits or they even think about like harming themselves or people around them. And these are actually ways that our body signal for us to slow down and check in because it is struggling. So just like a car where we need to check the petrol level, we need to check the tire pressures, when we neglect to take care of our mental health, we may break down at unexpected times, leading to the most common mental issues we see in our therapy rooms, and that is anxiety and depressive symptoms. In fact, according to uh, the latest National Health and Morbidity Survey, three out of 10 adults above the age of 16 is struggling with a form of mental health issue. So one of the most common words people use to describe anxiety is um, um, I'm overthinking or I have running thoughts, which leads to a state of mental and physical 
agitation and ultimately exhaustion, whereas depression is characterized by a constant state of low mood, a sense of hopelessness, um, or a loss of interest, and even in some cases, unexplainable body pains. So if you or someone you know are experiencing this kind of symptoms, as a mental health professional, I want to assure you that these struggles are real and not just in your mind. And sometimes it can be very, very hard to just like snap out of it. It is important to remember that you and me, we are both humans and that um, the stresses in life affects us both mentally and emotionally. And so sometimes all we need is someone to, you know, walk beside us in this journey for a little while until we're ready to take it up alone again. So this is where um, mental health professional comes in, whether it's a counselor, a psychologist, or even a psychiatrist. So with this perspective in mind, seeking help is not a sign of weakness. It's not just for the crazy people out there, but it's actually for everyone who needs it. Seeking help is essentially taking a step towards solving a problem so that we may journey towards a more fruitful and more meaningful life. So for those who wants to um, reach out, there's the Mental Health, Malaysian Mental Health Association, MMHA, or in Help University, there's the Center of Psychological and Counseling Services, CPCS. So I hope that this short sharing will give you a glimpse of a clinical perspective of mental health um, for young people. Thanks so much, Tom. I really appreciate it. And I think, you know, you've highlighted a couple of essential points there that are very central to what we're doing with this festival. And it, it reminds me of what the suggestion to include a package of therapy counseling sessions from HA or CPCS as one of the prizes was um, from one of our undergrads on our team in the festival. And I, at first, I didn't quite appreciate it. I was trying to get my head around it. And it's definitely an unconventional idea. I think it's a brilliant idea. Um, I don't know if it's a, a use by date on the offering if people get it, but you said that everybody that you know needs help ought to seek help, and it's a sign of strength and not weakness. And I, I think universally at some stage we're all going to be in a situation where we could benefit from it. So you know it's an unconventional thing to win as a prize in a in a competition, but it's it has great value and it's something that all of us at some stage you know could use. So um, thanks for highlighting the perspective from it clinical psychologist. Okay, so um, I'm conscious of the fact that our time is running a little bit late, but I, I, I think we might have to go into um, an extra few minutes. So now I want to invite Edward to talk briefly about how do you make a film? What should you bear in mind for those who are interested in joining the festival? Hello, everyone. Hi, Mark. Thank you. Uh, well, uh, everyone is so serious about uh, mental health. Uh, I feel a bit nervous already. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. So a little bit different than what we have been speaking. Um, so in making film, it's actually very easy. Uh, there's nothing to think about and just shoot. Because nowadays equipments are so easy. Everybody has a phone that is enough to tell the story. And that's all we need to know. Um, especially that we are targeting towards youth and we are, I don't think it is a priority that we actually look at the technicality of uh, like all these high definition of visual effects. So no worries on that. I mean, we try our best to do it, but I think that's about it because in the end, it's the passion that drives. There's no, re no, there's no, there's no point in comparing us with things we see on the cinema, in the cinema, you know, or on YouTube because uh, it's the story that matters. And especially at this, at this, uh, in these, in this competition where a theme is given about mental health, it's actually much more easier because it has narrowed down so much for us that there is something that we want to tell that is that is in our passion because it's 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 there is already a topic for us which is mental health. And if we care about it, it's so much more easier to 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 write and it's 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 so much more easier to do it because because um it is it is always like that because like Previously, when I joined a competition that is many times, like it's a competition called BMW Shorties where every short filmmakers wanna wanna win it. I joined like six times and I lost six times because five times out of uh, five times I was thinking about winning it. But the one time 
It's actually when I was thinking about like, this is a story I want to tell. And that is when I felt it's much more easier to do it because I'm really passionate about, and at this point, and everybody in here is passionate about mental health and this, and let it, let it motivate ourselves. And when it comes to mental health, I think actually filmmaking, uh, I know many friends who helps, like when they have anxiety, they use filmmaking, especially script writing as a way to express. So it doesn't have to be directly telling the story of what we are going through, but sometimes uh, filmmaking is an art. We use this a story to represent how we feel and to put it out in a picture where we express it to the others. And especially times like these, and even myself on the previous MCO, I did write a few scripts because uh, I got not much. And uh, it helps me, it helps me think about things that it's surrounding. And um, it is useful. And then now I'm actually planning one of the script that I wrote during MCO. So yeah, uh, don't think too much, just, uh, just shoot it. <laughs> Fantastic. Brilliant, Edward. You've really, you've definitely buoyed the tone of the conversation talking about the, the passion of creating um, sort of counterbalancing, struggling with mental health. So I, I think that's a great message, you know, just, just do it and let the passion drive you um, and don't deliberate too much over the technical side of it. Um, and, and don't worry so much about the outcome. The process is also important. Yeah, it can be very therapeutic. Yeah. Okay. Thanks so much, Edward. We're going to go briefly then now through um, how you can get involved before we get to Q&A. So first of all, the films are for individual or teams of three submissions. You can help by telling your friends, family, students and teachers. You can follow us on social media or you can give us your ideas today or any other time. The criteria briefly are it should be made in Malaysia or perhaps made by Malaysians if you're stuck somewhere else. Um, English language with, or with English subtitles made during October to December 2020 uh, and we're going to provide more guidelines, more detailed guidelines once we launch on the 20th and once your film's ready you can submit it to filmfreeway.com forward slash my mind on film. Again we'll be putting this information out once we launch properly. So at that I want to turn over to you guys now if anybody has any questions please jump in or put up your hand um, or if you have any questions you want to type out then you can do that now. So let's see do we have any questions yet? Yeah. All right, so if we don't have any questions just yet, uh, let me hey, I'm begin. sorry to interrupt you. Ah, please, go. Yeah. yeah, just wondering, do we have to register before submitting? That's a really good question, Stephanie. Um, as it is, we're still working out the, the submission process, but I think registering is probably a good idea. So we'll probably have a process, so at least we know you're interested and you're planning to submit something. Yeah. All right, thank, thank you. For thank you. Okay. Um, and where can we follow up for the uh, upcoming information? So the best place right now is on social media, but we'll also email you if you register with Eventbrite. Um, we can send you more information. But yeah, if you follow, if you, you can follow us on social media, it's probably a good way to do it. And if you go okay. to the, the filmfreeway.com website that we've already given the link to in this, um, so in the previous slide. So that one there, uh, it's my mind on film is the, the uh, suffix. That will become open on the 20th. So if okay. you go to it now, it will say it's not available just yet. But by the 20th, that will be open. All the details will be on there. Okay, thanks for the information. All right, thanks, Stephanie. Okay, any other questions from our audience? Right, sorry, um, I actually have one question. I noticed that uh, for the film, uh, there needs to be individual or a team of three. What if I have more people than three? It's, it's a really good question. Um, yeah, we, we were just trying to make it so there's some consistency across the, you know, the resources that people were gathering together. Um, I get, and also for prizes, because we don't have a lot of money to give out. Um, but I, I suppose we, it's a good question. What we'll do is we'll take it back and we'll, we'll consider it. 
I mean, one way around it is you have a, a visible team um, that is submitted. If you do get other help, we can't control that. Um, but yeah, you have a team of four now? Or is this a uh, Actually, it's much more than that. It's like, I actually am planning to already shoot a film, but it, it is related to mental health. So Good. I just found out about this, uh, this competition. Then, yeah, I just hop on in this meeting and see what's, what, it, what it is about. Brilliant. How many people are in your production unit then? Um, I'd say definitely more than 10. So definitely more than 10. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, if, yeah, I mean, if you can make that invisible in your, in your film, you know, we might not know, but I, I, it's a tricky one. Um, but yeah, thanks for the, the question. We'll, we'll definitely consider it. Does anybody have any, any thoughts on that? Anyone else want to jump in on that? The limits to the, the team size. Okay, I mean, it, I can, it does seem a little bit arbitrary, um, but we'll, we'll give it some more thought. Okay, anybody else have any questions? Got anything in the chat? Sorry, can I jump in on the previous question? Mark? Please do, yeah. Yeah, um, uh, on, well, <clears throat> I, uh, when I was, during any, any other competition, I have a group of friends that we always pick first and say like, oh, who, when we win, who's going to get what? And if that's, if that's sorted out, and then if you just join with all your friends, I think that's fine. Um, yeah, I mean, if it, it didn't win, I mean, that's fine. But if you have all these friends who are all in together, and if like you have multiple script, I would suggest if you can, if you have enough time uh, and together, then I think it will be nice if you guys can actually participate in a few entries. Uh, just swap up the few roles. Uh, it's fun as well. Uh, you guys can just do different things, uh, helping out each other. I think that's always what I like to do. Sounds like a good solution. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. It sounds like yeah. Okay. Great. I have one question here. Another one. <laughs> Sorry for the number of questions. Uh, I'm not sure if you've mentioned and I've missed it. Um, is there a team surrounding mental health or is just ge general mental health? Yeah, really good question, Stephanie. So um, we did think about including some specific themes or a theme, but we thought to leave it open um, just so that people can express it how they want to rather than narrowing it. Would you prefer to be given uh, a theme? Mm, I think open it up is good, general is good, so we can, you know, make use of our creativity. But I'm just clarifying this because recently I stumbled across another competition which they, they mentioned uh, the theme is racism or um, Black Lives Matters, this kind of theme. So just yeah. want to make it clear. Yeah, no, appreciate you clarifying it. Yeah, our intention is to leave it, to leave it open. Okay, that's good. Thank okay. you. Cheers, Stephanie. All right, I think we've got a couple of questions in the chat. So what's the maximum duration of the film? Eight minutes is what we're capping it at. Um, okay, so hi, Tamar and Jeremy. If we're not mental health professionals, how could we help contribute to the mental health awareness in Malaysia? So this is from, from Jack. Yeah, um, Tamar and Jeremy, do you, either of you guys want to answer that question? Yeah, sure. Um, um, Jeremy here. Probably I, I can just take it on. Um, just let me switch it on. Um, Jack, yeah. Um, great question. I guess uh, maybe before I clarify on further, I'm I'm not a I'm not a mental health professional, uh, not by means of in terms of academic or professional itself. So um, I think by joining this is one of the example of how do you raise uh, mental health awareness, it's because. Uh, Mental health, how you perceive mental well-being is very much different from how I perceive things. And then uh, probably in your video, in your video, it could be something more about um, you know, destigmatizing mental health, right? If you have friends or family members who are suffering several matters, right? And when you film the movie, for example, oh, sorry, when you when you do a film and you show it from your point of view to other people, this is where people start recognizing what's mental mental health all about. It's all about. Um, so I think one thing that maybe I just want to point out a little bit um, is because like 
when we do when we talk about mental well-being we always think about the very negative side of things depression anxiety you know um, suicidal thoughts but there there's also another side of mental well-being which is the positive note right optimism you know how do you receive uh, mental resilience so um so yeah just to yeah so just to answer you like uh, there are ways that you can actually um, help with your mental health awareness not does it doesn't necessarily necessitate for you to be in, uh, to be part of an academician or part of a professional itself yeah yeah cheers Jeremy. yeah jack th thanks for the question it's, it's a great question um and do follow us and if we can continue to try and provide avenues through which people can engage in this beyond the festival uh, that would be fantastic we're hoping that this festival isn't going to just be a one-off thing. We want it to be a recurring thing, but we also want it to go beyond the competition. One of our one of our aims is to put together a showreel of the, the better films, the films that we select, and then to screen those at events and in schools and use that as a basis for discussion. So those discussions could be with high schoolers, but they could equally be with bunches of parents. You know, it could be a conversation about young people and you know what's going on with these young people and this is how they see it. So um we're hoping that this becomes a vehicle for other ways of, of sort of elevating the conversation. I've got a question here from Kent about, um, do you consider weed behavior of a dementia person as a mental health issue? Yeah, absolutely, Kent. I mean, dementia is you know, an extremely serious mental health concern um, with our aging populations, and it has a massive impact on families and individual well-being and mental health, not just if the individual suffering from dementia, but those who are caring for them. And yeah, this is really a, a topic that we'd love to see in the festival. Actually, uh, Violet Fong, I was just checking a film, Violet Fong made a documentary called Please Remember Me, about a couple where one of the partners had um, dementia in Shanghai about 2016, and she won quite a lot of a few awards for that. Um, that's definitely one worth checking out. But yeah, if, if you're interested in exploring this, that'd be fantastic. Okay, so if I'm missing any questions in the chat, please highlight them for me. Uh, Tan Yen Zhao, you've got your hand raised, you've got a question. Right, good afternoon, uh, oh, sorry, good evening. Uh, uh, thank you for the presentation, for, first of all. i just like to go back to the question of uh, team size and ask what is the intention of uh, capping the, the team size? Is it to uh, balance the production value? In, term, yeah, in terms of production value, how high can we go? And is there a standard across the board for, for when it comes to judging the competition? Yeah, really good questions. And I, I hold my hands up and want, to the best of my recollection when we were deciding on the numbers, it was really, partially was that, it was, you know, we kind of capped the capacity, although I know that some individuals are very capable, you know, on their own. Um, but a lot of it was as well, if we're thinking about the competition and how we would then um, be able to provide prizes. I think Edward's given a really good potential solution to that. Um, but yeah, it's so. This is, is I take this as another objection to having a cap. What what sort of team size are you thinking about, Tanya and Zhao? Uh, so I I plan to work individually to have a to have a small low budget level uh, production. So I'm just concerned how would that come across to the judges when it comes to judging the production value and the quality of work. Okay, all right. Yeah. So right now we only have two categories for competition, you know, which is the age range categories. We haven't thought about further um, dividing. I mean, it might be a consideration if you, I'm not sure if this time, if we if we have the capacity to sort of subdivide further, but, um, you know, I don't know, Edward, what, what's your take on it as a filmmaker? Do you feel as though, you know, an individual can be absolutely as capable, in, at least in producing something that has the, the impact? Definitely. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, hi, hi, Enzo. Yen Zhao uh, was, a, was a high school student from AISM. No, uh, he, was, he was over in, my, in Green Film for a week for a career research uh, for uh, last year. I think it was last year, right? Yeah. Oh my, are you, are you still in school? Yeah, I'm definitely still in school, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, all right, that's great. Um, I have seen like, um, because I, there was a competition during last MCO, it's called Kuman, Kuman K-U-M-A-N, Kuman Picture. Uh, it's, it's by a product, a friends of our, uh, friends of mine, a production house where he he invites uh, all the fellow filmmakers to make a film at home during last MCO. So those were just um, uh, 
filmmakers and their family members and just shoot and be them being themselves as the actors and they just put a tripod roll go inside act come back out stop you know or they just ask the family member to record their sound so it, it can be as little as just you and your mom or you know it can be it can be that easy uh, and the quality is still great because in the end it's the story it doesn't it really doesn't matter like you can have hundred people doing like visual effects like Avengers but then in the end if like the story doesn't matter and um, it doesn't it doesn't keep an audience watching it, it, I, I feel like I feel like it, it, it could defeat the purpose but if like let's say you have three people and these three and you have a really good script and these three people are all together very passionate regarding the script it all it's all that matters yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. I, I, in the end, it's in the end, it's the script. I think a number of people, the, the, the really doesn't matter. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, we just have to look at the work of James Cameron to to confirm that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, um, all right. So, I think maybe we, we'll, we'll definitely consider whether we even need to specify this. It's the film itself, isn't it? And then whatever the prizes are, they just have to be divided according to you know the, the submitters, right? Does that make sense? So, yeah, maybe we don't need to be so, um, we don't need to specify about how many people on the team because ultimately the, the quality of the submission can be, you know, can be just Yeah, I, th I think that's, I think that's better. Yeah. Okay, brilliant. Thank you. All right. Thanks so much, Shantel. Um Okay. Uh, I think what we'll do is, because we're already getting to 25 past nine, um, we'll go through the last couple of slides. And if there's anything that comes up, we can be contacted with any of the queries. Um, we'll be very, very happy to address it. But uh, finally, just the key points to consider um, are, first of all, safety. So we are going to be putting in place safeguarding guidelines, particularly for younger people, um, on what they might bear in mind if they're thinking about their mental health and their emotional well-being during this period. Um, but also physical health is critical, of course, during CMCO. Everything has to be done bearing in mind um, physical distancing. The key dates, remember, we're open for submissions between October 20th and December 20th, 2020. Um, the webinars, we have planned two webinars, one on positive psychology and mental health on October 27th, and one on mental health and access to services on November 7th. All of this will be putting out lots of uh, information, uh, messaging through social media and through the websites once you're linked on to those. And the final awards event is scheduled for January 21, for the end of January. So with that, I just want to say thank you to our team who have been incredible, uh, our undergraduate student team putting together all of this very, very quickly and very competently. And their names are listed there. I will thank them all individually later. Um, my colleagues, Yvonne Fu and Bashir at Health, at Health University, Su Jen Chong um, and Tamar at MHA, Ruben Dev Singh, who's also working through MHA, um, and our sponsors who are Grim Films, MBO, and our um, collaborators, Heads Up, uh, Center for Psychological and Counseling Services, um, and also the Rotary Club of Bukit Kiara, Sunrise. So thank you all very much. And um, if you have any questions, please email us at this address, mymindonfilm.my at gmail.com and follow us on social media. We'd love to hear from you and we look forward to seeing your submissions uh, after the 20th. Have a, a wonderful evening. And we will see you all very soon. Thanks, Thanks Mark. Thanks so much to our speakers yeah. as well. Um, look forward to following up the conversation with you guys. Yeah. Have a good evening, guys. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Thank you. Good Bye. night. Thank you for the presentation. Bye. Good night.